So this is the parquet flooring that I've got in a front room. And this is pine blocks that's been laid down with bitumen. And I'm guessing it's been there about 50 years. And none of the blocks adhere to the floor any longer. So the whole thing has got to come up. So as I start to remove these blocks, uh, it's a very messy job. And uh, I'm hoovering out all the dust that has fallen down the cracks. And uh, most of them just come up by picking them up. And only a few actually have to be encouraged out with a hammer. And uh, I managed to sell this lot on eBay, which was um, something. And once that was done, I'm then on to um, preparing the floor. So there's a lot of bitumen and uh, it's so thick that it's not going to be a good uh, surface for the um, self-leveling concrete. So all I can do is to take a chisel. Uh, this is like for building work. I don't use this in, in, my, uh, in my workshop. And I sit there and laboriously chisel off as much as I possibly can. And I actually went over the entire floor and uh, it was a horrible job. With that done, uh, I then need to prepare the floor. So I take uh, PVA and mix it up uh, about four to one. So it's very thick, it's like milk. And the idea being is, is that the, the floor needs to be sealed before you put the self-leveling concrete down because what you don't want to do is for the self-leveling concrete to dry out over an area where you've got a more porous surface. So most of this is covered in bitumen, that's fine, but in the areas that don't have anything and are just bare concrete, they're probably going to be more absorbent. And as the self-leveling concrete has got a work time of about 20 minutes, uh, you don't really want to eat into any of that by having it sort of being absorbed into, uh, you know, porous uh, concrete. So um, as you do this, you obviously find a better technique and ultimately I did. And you can see that I think just pouring it on the floor and then brushing it out is uh, ultimately a lot quicker than trying to uh, paint it on, so to speak. And that was um, a relatively quick process. And um, it was just nice to see a different colour from this horrible black. And also the smell of this bitumen was, you know, it was horrible. And it was starting to sort of uh, make the downstairs of the house uh, smell like a road. And with that done, um, I had to then leave that for about a week. And once it does dry, um, it uh, completely turns clear. And um, this is what it looked like once it had been done. And uh, you can clearly see that where the low spots are, it's um, it's pulled, and that's fine because you know over a seven day period, it completely dries out. So now we're on to the actual self leveling stage. So um, when it comes to self leveling concrete, because you've got such a short working time, you want everything on your side. So I've got a stick here with a little mark on it, and that means that I can measure out exactly five liters of water to that 125 kilo bag and um, I've rehearsed what I'm going to do, where it's going to go, you know I've got uh, Wellington standing by, I've got sheets on the ground and as I mix this up I've got my partner filming me and she's actually going to take over from the mixing job so that I can effectively lay this and scree it and, um, and she can go out and mix it and then that means that I can really um, you know take full advantage of that working time. And um, it's probably ideal to have a needle roller, and I don't, I couldn't find one, I couldn't hire one, so I just had to use a hand trowel. And uh, what you want to do is you want to scree it as, as best as you possibly can. Uh, that takes out any little lumps that you might have left in the, uh, in the mixing stage, and also it helps to smooth out any little bubbles that you've got. Now in the corner that I'm working at the moment, when I put the, uh, the next uh, bucket down, I uh, ended up not um, thinning it out as much as I should and uh, I ended up with a with a high spot pretty much where I'm working or was working a couple of seconds ago and um, because I think if I was going to do this again I would probably have poured half of the contents on the floor and screwed that out rather than the whole contents on the floor and screwed it out. And also, I think if I'd done this wearing Wellingtons, I wouldn't have felt so bad about walking into it and then screeing towards me. But um, I can tell at this stage that I've got a high spot there. I mean, I didn't know, but I know subsequently that I did. But as I actually watched the video back, I can see that I'm 
I didn't really spend enough time um, screwing it there. The rest of it worked out very well. You can see those wooden channel, those those channels that uh, are actually in the in the floor. Um, they were put down, I suppose, when the when the builder first uh, laid a concrete floor, and he uh, then put timber in there and used it to uh, scrape uh, a level across to get his floor relatively level. So uh, I pulled the wood out, which is why we've got to fill that bit in. Each bag at a five minute millimeter depth is capable of uh, of covering an area of three square meters and as the room is 12.9 meters but I reckon point well at least one of those meters is taken up by the fact that the uh, the fireplace um, doesn't really have an area to it uh, the room should be 12 meters so four bags should do the should do the trick but I actually bought five and ended up using five so it's always better to have and not need than need and not have so here I am um, smoothing out the very last bag uh, in a puddle of it and um, I've prepared the uh, other side of that doorway so that I'm not going to get a mess and uh, a bit of shameless advertising for that door. All the doors in this house are um, a completely odd size and there is nothing that I can buy to fit it so I made that door. And that is how to lay a self-leveling concrete floor. That was my first time. So the next job is to clean up all the tools and uh, off camera I cleaned the mixing tools and the float and uh, here you can see me just cleaning the bucket and um, if you hang around um, to the end of this video which is uh, not much longer now you can see where I lay a level on the floor and you can see uh, just how flat it is and um, you can also see that little high spot that uh, I was mentioning but at this stage it looks very nice and uh, this is uh, this is immediately after it's been done and then I take a shot of it uh, five hours later and at this stage you could walk on it and uh, I didn't walk on it until probably about four hours after that uh, in the evening when I closed all the windows and put a dehumidifier in the room and I left that running for about two days to get the water out and uh, this is what it looks like so it's a slightly lighter colour and then um, I'm laying a level down and it makes a nice uh, clanking sound, a bit of shameless advertising for that uh, windowsill and um, it's all very smooth and very flat and uh, that's very reassuring um, but as I go to the other side of the room where I was mentioning earlier uh, you can just see just actually around where that bubble is, where that high spot was. So I'm going to be laying carpet in this room but um, were I to be laying another wood floor, really I should have a completely billiard flat surface. So thanks for watching. Um, this was my first time and uh, you can do it. Please consider subscribing. Thanks a lot.